we're talking about freelance trainers and whether we're going to accept substitutes or not and the effect that has on the employment status of that individual. Now, Jackie, you use a variety of trainers and you obviously book them because you value their expertise and their delivery. Exactly. So would you accept a suitably qualified substitute if that trainer was either double booked or felt ill or if there was some legitimate reason why that trainer couldn't turn up? No. No. Most training providers would say that. Mm. Um, but it puts you in an interesting position because mm. if you're contracting with someone that they personally must deliver the service mm. as opposed to their firm or whatever, they are being contracted with you as what's known as a worker. Right. That doesn't mean they your employee, but it does mean that if that's the basis of your arrangement, they have all the rights that workers have in this country. Oh. Would you like to guess what they might be? Yes, please expand. <laughs> okay. the, the big ones are obviously health and safety yeah. covers workers. Um, all sorts of things like working time minimum holiday and national minimum wage cover workers and discrimination, all the equality rights uh, cover workers. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't hire people like on that basis, mm. but it does mean that there's an awful lot of people out there who think freelance workers have got no rights okay. and that's not the case. So, so what, what's the actual practicalities of that then? How does that, I mean you've, you've headlined the parts, health and safety, holidays, etc. What's the practicalities of it? How does that actually...? Well, it means your agreement needs to deal with health and safety, mm. however briefly, because you need to tell them what your health and safety policy so is. So is that not something for the venue then that they're at in terms of health and safety? If that's what you want to make the agreement say, right. check the venue's health and safety policy, but you can't do nothing. No. Okay. That doesn't mean you've got to go and get a health and safety audit of the venue. Right. But you need to tie into health and safety for them, okay. as you would indeed for your delegates in mm. some way, wouldn't mm. you? Mm. It also means that if you're paying someone whatever a day and they're accruing statutory holiday, you need to make provision for that in your contract. It doesn't mean you need to pay them any more, it means your contract needs to deal with that. Okay. Because in theory, someone who did a training course a, a month for you, for 12 months, has accrued five oh, point don't... whatever weeks annual leave. That's an interesting thought, isn't it? It is indeed, <laughs> and needless to say, we wrestle with that one, we've sorted it out in our agreement so yeah. that it's all accounted for and you don't pay any more. Okay. But without that, you do run the risk. Yeah. Um, similarly with minimum wage, but finally with discrimination. I'm not saying you would ever dream of doing it, but obviously if you have trainers from different groups, different genders and different orientations, and you stop using them, mm. you are open to someone saying it's only because I'm, I'm filling the blanks. So if you've got no process for ending the relationship, no documentation as to why you didn't book them anymore. Mm. You are kind of standing near a very big hole, aren't you? Mm. 